Hi, welcome back to the On the House podcast. I'm your host, Alex Berlin, and today we're talking a little bit about some of the interior features of your new home um, that kind of set us apart from our competition in both the site built and uh, in the offsite built world. Uh, we did one of these podcasts a couple of weeks ago where we talked about the exterior features and we got uh, a lot of feedback on it. So uh, I'd appreciate your feedback on this one. We want to know you know, how you're feeling and uh, what questions you have about uh, the content that we're putting out. So please feel free to uh, reach out to us via any one of our social media or uh, contact information and, and ask us further questions, you know, because we can only put so much out here um, by reading off the standards list. So to start, um, I want to talk about, you know, you, you might think when I say interior, I want to jump straight into cabinets and I want to drink, jump straight into, uh, you know, what kind of mirrors and lights and stuff we're putting up. And I'll get there eventually. But I think one of the most important things that we can do, uh, kind of like starting off with a good foundation for a well-built house, we want to start off with a really good quality drywall program. And that's going to lead towards a lot of really good quality interior finishes throughout the house. You know, it's going to, it's going to feel like a very different house if the drywall is done properly. And I get a lot of people that will walk into our homes and maybe they're on a lot, uh, you know, a dealership lot, a builder lot where there's our homes and some of our competitors homes. And they'll walk up to me and they'll say, uh, you know, Alex, I've been walking around this open house and I just feel like something's different with your homes. I feel like it's, um, you know, it's just a different level of quality. It's a different level of finish. And there's something that's, you know, I just can't put on the tip of my tongue on why it feels that way. And I personally feel like it's drywall quality. Um, most everybody in the industry uses half inch on the, on the walls and that's great. That's what we use too, obviously. Uh, but we take it one step further than most of my other factory built competition. And we don't use half inch on the ceiling. Whereas they're buying as much half inch as they possibly can. And so they're going to use it on the walls and on the ceiling. And they only want to maintain one skew as a manufacturer. Um, we take the time and the energy and effort to slow down and put the right thing on the ceiling. Uh, much like the site build industry does and is used to doing. And that's 5 8 inch drywall. Now our ceiling structure is that our roof structure, excuse me, is that our roof trusses are 24 inch on center spacing. That gives us a 50 pound roof load with the lumber quality that we're using and with the headers that we're using. Um, so we've got plenty of load for 90% of the area that we build in. And then if we need to get up into Northern Michigan, we can jump up to a 70 pound roof load. We can do all that. But most importantly, when we're in that 24 inch on center spacing on your roof trusses, the ceiling drywall uh, at half inch just isn't enough strength in that half inch to span that 24 inches and not have a lot of waviness in it. So what my competitors will do after they put up their half inch drywall is then they put up a monster amount of stomp on the ceiling and they, and, and they texture it in whatever way that they texture it. But there's so much mud on that ceiling, so much stomp texture on that ceiling, I should say, um, that in a lot of cases you feel like you're about to get your hair brushed when you're walking through a, a ceiling that's built by by my competitors. So we're very different and then we that we use the right quality materials even though it would be maybe easier or faster or cheaper to just run all half inch we slow down and we put the true 5 8 inch on and that gives us a really good starting point. Uh, in addition to that, the way that we build our ceilings is very, very different than how a site builder would build it. And uh, if you listen to our other content, you're probably sick and tired of hearing hearing me talk about this. But if I was in the site built world, again, my goal is to get my house weather tight as quickly as possible. So I have to build from the outside in. I've got to put on all my OSB sheeting. Um, onto my framing. I've got to put my roof trusses on then my OSB sheeting. And then I come back inside the house and then I can put up drywall. Well, at that point, I'm cutting around all my interior walls. I'm cutting around all my door headers. I'm cutting around all my um, you know, closet, uh, closet entrances. And so what you end up getting is uh, a lot of drywall waste in that instance because I'm, I'm doing it after the fact that all of my framing has been done. Whereas our system is that we're going to be able to lay out all of our sheets of drywall onto our ceiling building table in full sheets. And we're going to attach it to our ceiling structure and we'll move that whole structure onto the top of the walls of the house. So you have a 5 8 inch drywall above your, your double top plate on your walls and on your ceiling. And it gives us, you know, one, either the ability to have a true eight foot or nine foot ceiling height in any given home to the ability to waste a lot less. Um, at the, the third point, excuse me, that I'll make about, um, 
the ceiling drywall as well. And I know I'm rambling on about this a little bit, but it is very, very important to getting the basic elements of the interior finish of your home right is that, again, I'll pick on a site builder. If I'm going to put on my drywall after my roof has already been framed, whether I'm using um, a truss truss system or I'm using, you know, a rafter system or joist that I cut myself, wood's not perfect, okay? Wood has barked edges, it bows, it cups. There's nobody in the world who's using perfect lumber. Um, You can pay a lot of money and get really, really good straight, you know, dug fur or laminated beam lumber, stuff like that, but still not perfect. And so let's go to an example of, um, you know, again, a site builder, their roof is on, their roof trusses are on, and they're going to take their ceiling drywall and they're going to press it up to that imperfect roof truss. may have a bark edge, may have a little cup in it, maybe has a bow in it, but the drywall is going to move to the imperfectness, if that's a word, of your ceiling structure. Uh, We don't do that here at Rochester Homes. What we do, again, is we lay out that drywall on a flat surface, on a flat building table. Then we come back and we put our roof trusses on top of that. And then we spray foam glue our drywall to that roof truss. And so at no point have we pushed it to the imperfect nature of that truss. Um, If there's a barked edge, that spray foam glue fills in that barked area. You know, if there's a cup, it fills in that barked area. And we never force the drywall off of that very, very flat building table. And then, so when we move it out of that station, we move it onto the mud and uh, tape station the the first coat for the ceiling you can look down our our production facility and you can see how flat our roofs are how flat your ceiling is going to be so we start with a very very flat surface now we still go back and we mud and tape the you know all the seams and we make sure that it's 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 as flat as we can make it with mud and tape as well but we're gonna spend a lot less time with ceiling mud with ceiling stomp overcoming any kind of fluctuation in poor quality material or poor quality lumber um, because of the way that we build. So we start with this really, really flat ceiling and then we can apply a very, very light texture. And I think it brings about a very different feeling to our homes. Um, you know, something that, that people can feel and they can touch and, and they understand that our homes, you know, cost a little bit more for a reason because we're slowing down, we're taking the time to do it right and we're buying the right quality materials. So Um, That was one of the bigger things I wanted to talk about today on this was just like start with the basics. I know that's not an area where everybody walks in and, you know, Joanna Gaines isn't talking about drywall. I get that. Uh, She's talking about finishes and cabinets and light fixtures and all the pretty stuff that I'll talk a little bit here about. But how you build the home starts from the foundation up to the floor, up to the walls, up to the drywall, up to the ceiling. You know, it's, it's, it, if you start right and you continue right throughout it, it's going to make the finished process that much nicer and that much better. So I wanted to cover that today. Um, some other stuff here as I go down my list, you know, I already mentioned eight foot sidewalls, nine foot sidewalls throughout. And when we upgrade to a nine foot sidewall height, you know, not only does it open up the house greatly, makes you know, rooms and floor plans feel a lot better, bigger, but we also package in taller windows and that's going to bring in more natural light. And so, uh, you're just going to get a much better, again, feeling house on the interior. When you upgrade your ceiling height, you upgrade your window height, we'll upgrade the cabinet height as well as a package within that. And then another thing that you could potentially do would be to upgrade the size of your, uh, your door trim of your base trim to fill up the wall a little bit more in those tall ceilings and and everything just feels a little bit more full and a little more grand. So that's, that's an option that we, we kind of package together as you get into the taller ceilings. All right. So on to a little bit more about the actual interior finishes. Um, you know, there's a lot of little stuff like our, Uh, Light switches are decorative rocker switches. That's standard with us, whereas that would be an upgrade for most of our competitors. Um, They look better. They look simpler. Uh, The the toggles are kind of a a dated feature that a lot of my competitors still use as a standard. Um, Another thing that we do that most of my competitors don't is we use a lever action door handle. Uh, So they're much, much easier to use. you know, especially as people are planning on aging in place, they want to be in, in their homes for a long time. People are in their homes more often working from home and talk, thinking about, you know, retiring one day in there. It's much easier to use a lever action handle than the old classic uh, doorknobs that most of my competitors are, are standard with. Um, as we design all of our homes, you know, if we've got a custom home floor plan or if we've got one of our floor plans, even if it's being altered, we're always going to make sure to put in 
six, seven, eight recessed can lights into every single kitchen. It's a nice classic feature. Um, you know, a lot of my competitors are still putting like a bedroom ceiling light into their kitchens. Uh, that's not good enough for our customers, for our homes. We want a ton of light in the kitchen. It's the family gathering area. It's the where it's the place that we prepare our meals and our love for our family. So lots of light in there. We go ahead and mount LED uh, recessed bulbs in there for you as well. For, so, you know, when your home ships to you, you're going to have that in there. And then for, um, you know, for bathrooms and for kitchen accents as well, we're going to be doing pendant lighting. Um, you know, bedrooms will all have their own lights and stuff. But lights is another area, too, where I like to say, you know, if you are looking to make your home feel very unique, um, just omit a couple of our lights and go out and get, you know, a unique piece that really speaks to you. Unfortunately, I can't carry every pendant light that uh, was ever designed to go over kitchen, uh, you know, kitchen island maybe, but a lot of stores around you probably do. So you can always omit a, a few of our things and, and upgrade them very, very easily by doing those on site. But we're going to give you those basic building blocks like the kitchen recess cans to, to be a great starting place for you.